All right, let's talk about getting outside of the pentatonic scale. Now, this is all part and parcel to finding your voice and building your vocabulary. So here I was, you know, a young man playing guitar already for, geez, seven, eight years. I started playing when I was six. So by 13, 14, as silly as it sounds, I was pretty good. And I was well-versed in blues and able to play, you know, and improvise pretty much any time just playing blues. And I felt pretty good about myself. And then I started hearing <laughs> other guys. I started hearing John Schofield and Robin Ford and Larry Carlton and Wes Montgomery. And, of course, like I said, I was listening to a lot of horn players. Uh, that's Charlie Parker and, you know, John Coltrane, Miles Davis, Dizzy, guys like that. And I started kind of hearing some of that stuff in my head but having no idea how to play it. And I realized there were some things I could do to kind of start working on these things. And... So this is the like the generalization of how I break out of the box. I'm thinking of basically four things. And I split that into two groups. One thing and then three other things. And this is going to sound complicated, but it's not. The one thing, the main thing is building up the vocabulary of knowing what to play over every chord that's happening. So when a song is happening, you learn all all these things over your life of what works over a certain chord. Now, this goes back to the basics. This is learning your circle of fifths, knowing that when a chord comes up in a song, you can play A, B, C, D, E. All these things work over that chord. It may be as simple as when this A7 comes, I know I can play A pentatonic. Whatever. And then you learn all these other things you can also play. But that's column A, learning everything that works over that chord. Column B is connecting that chord to another chord. Now, this is the crux and the basis for jazz. What do guys do to connect one chord to the other? Now, you always hear guys talk about playing the changes. Well, there's two ways to play the changes. There's playing over the changes, and to me, there's the more important one, which is playing through the changes. Now, the difference is playing over the changes means when a chord change happens, you then play something that works over that chord. So I eliminate that phrase, playing the changes, over the changes, because that all works into column A. That's learning what to play over each chord. Playing through the changes is how do you connect one chord to another. Now that's the three things that I'm going to talk about right now. I connect these, three, these chords together in three ways. Chromatics, turnarounds, and diminished or augmented chords. Now, these three things literally only exist to create bridges between chords, to create tension. So let's start talking about that. Chromatics. What do I mean by chromatics? Well, I just mean stuff as simple as, you know, moving from one chord to the next via chromatically. So let's say I'm going from A to D. I may play. Or I may play. Or I may play. All these different chromatic moves you can get. Right? So you can use those things, of course, to connect chords together. So I may pl be playing a blues in A. And as simply as chromatically connecting those chords like that, I'm creating something to, that connects chords together. I'm playing through the changes. So I would start to take those ideas and put them into my solos. So I'd play. Right? So that's me playing basically in my solo. I'm chromatically moving in and out of the chords. That's one way that guys connect chords together. The second way is by using diminished chords and augmented chords and substitutions. So diminished chords literally exist to create tension. Right? When you hear that chord, what's the next chord you want to hear? So literally, you can do that in your solo. So let's say you're on that four chord. You want to create that in your solo. That's me playing the diminished scale, going from D to E flat diminished to lead me back to the one, to A. 
So you can do that all over the place to connect chords together. And then the big one is the 2-5-1 turnaround. You can take this 2-5-1 turnaround and use this all over music. In fact, in jazz, a lot of songs are written solely by 2-5-1s changing key, keys, things like Giant Steps and things like that, which is very advanced. But for sake of the argument, let's say we're going from that same A to D, from the 1 to the 4. You can play a 2-5-1 to lead you to the 4 chord, and it's called a turnaround for a reason. But instead of playing the 2 and 5 of A, because we're trying to get to D, we're going to play the 2 and 5 of D. So if we're in A, I could play E minor to A to get to D. So you can hear if I just play that in rhythm, Freddie Green style, why it's called a turnaround. Because it literally turns the phrase around and leads me to that chord. So what if I did it in my solo? So that's me playing in my solo. You can do this everywhere. So I could take a blues and put a 2-5-1 everywhere. So I use the 2-5-1 to, to turn around between all three chords of the blues, back and forth, back and forth, to create kind of that feeling of going through the changes. Now when you're on the chords, you learned all that stuff to play. But those other tools are what you use to put them together. And that's what helps you kind of get side, outside of the box. And there's also all these other things you can do, all those other scales, all those other modes. That, there's no way around doing the homework on that. Learning, you know, that melodic minor, you can play that over the fifth degree of the scale and things like that. That takes a lot of work, and that's something we can dive into in depth later on. But these are the tools that I use to really kind of bust through the playing and make things flow, because that's what you're trying to do even when you're outside of the box. When you're playing through the changes, you're trying to make things flow together and not make it sound like you're changing keys when, when a new chord comes around. And that's how you do that, by connecting the dots. And to me, those are the tools to make those things happen.